Hand in hand, we snuck through the gardens and sat on a bench beneath the moon. The way he looked at me sent shivers down my spine. Our love is forbidden. Still, we care for each other deeply. He plans to tell his parents of our love soon. A return, my love. I missed you so much. My mother's necklace. She gave it to me. Told me to give it to the woman who would... who... would become my wife. Is this... is this what I think it means? Oh, Maurice! This is the happiest day of my life! Steal your necklace, my lady. I swear to you. Your son gave it to me. Maurice, please tell her. Silence! My son would never give my necklace to a lowly serving girl. I don't know which is worse. Your lies or your thieving fingers. Maurice, please. Tell her of our love. The time we've spent together. Why won't you say anything? I'm sure she didn't mean to steal it. She's been working awfully hard. Perhaps exhaustion. Enough! I'll hear no more excuses. Punish her with the whip, and then lock her in the tower. Footfalls. Come close. Welcome to the Harborage Vestige. This is as comfortable a home as an old dried-up husk like myself could hope for. Despite my blindness, nay, because of it, my other senses seem to have heightened. This place had the right smell about it. Indeed, but let us not get ahead of ourselves. Without an understanding of where we are bound, every road will get us nowhere. Before we truly understand our destination, we must speak of the past. Of a sort. I invite you to enter my mind and walk with me through visions of the past, that you might understand the events that brought us to this time, this moment. Enter my mind, Vestige and walk with me through the shadows of past events. Follow me, Vestige, and learn of the events that precipitated our current crisis. My part in the story began when I awoke on the steps of the Abbey of the Moth Priests with no memory of my prior life. The moth priests took pity upon me and brought me into their fold. I was weak and near death. It was there I first set eyes upon the Elder Scrolls and devoted my life to their study. The scrolls allowed me to glimpse the very fabric of reality, but each profound insight dimmed my vision and eventually left me permanently blinded to the light of the world.
prophecies of the Elder Scrolls are a fluid living thing. They are not fixed. At many points throughout history, the actions of heroic mortals have rewritten them. I only know that you are important, Vestige. The scrolls reveal to me that your destiny is intertwined with that of the Five Companions. The Five Companions were a band of adventurers who sought out an ancient artifact called the Amulet of Kings. They hoped to use this artifact to persuade Akatosh, the Dragon God, to accept their leader as one of the Dragonborn. Baron Aquilarius, the son of a Colobian duke, who led a rebellion against the Emperor Leovic and took the crown himself. Alas, Varon was not truly a dragonborn, as those who sit upon the ruby throne must be, in accordance with tradition. The dragonborn are mortals destined for greatness, with the blood of the dragons in their veins. It is said that only a true dragonborn can ignite the eternal dragon fires in the Imperial City. You have already heard enough babbling from this old blind fool. It is time you met the five companions yourself and witnessed their fate. The first companion, Lyris Titanborn, daughter of giants, was the mightiest warrior in the service of the Emperor. Next, Abnathar, a powerful sorcerer and Grand Chancellor to the Imperial Elder Council. The Red Guard Swordmaster, Sai Sahan, leader of the Imperial Dragon Guard. The Imperial Emperor, Baron Aquilarius, who attempted to light the dragon fires and failed. And finally, Manamarco, the traitor, the King of Worms. A powerful necromancer, and your execution. These were the five companions who set out from the Imperial City on an epic quest to recover the lost amulet of kings. Many Marco convinced Varen that the amulet could be used to perform a ritual that would rekindle the dragon fires. He claimed this would please Akatosh and entice him to adopt Verin as one of the Dragonborn. By tradition, only the Dragonborn can lay claim to the Ruby Throne and rule as the one true Emperor by divine right. Verin conquered Cyrodiil and took the throne, but unless he became Dragonborn, he feared he'd always be thought of as a pretender. Each of the five companions were chosen for their skill and courage and each was given a special role to perform in the party. Who would you like to know more about? You've already met Lyris. She's a Nord warrior from the frozen lands of Skyrim to the north, and it is said that her family lineage contains the blood of giants. Varen chose her for her strength and her loyalty to be his personal bodyguard. Sai Sahan came from a long line of Red Guard Swordmaster nobles. He was the leader of the Dragon Guard, the security detail of Varen and the Elder Council. While Lyris was Varen's bodyguard, Sai was charged with protecting the entire group. The Therns are one of the most influential families in Cyrodiil. Abner, their patriarch, is the leader of the Elder Council, a powerful battle mage and a shrewd politician. With his council, Varen was able to seize the Imperial throne years before. Manamarco the traitor, the great enemy, the most powerful necromancer this world has ever known. His worm cult infiltrates and corrupts every corner of Tamriel. It was he who convinced Varen to perform the ritual you are about to witness. Disaster, war, and pestilence. A world brought to its knees. Now watch and see how one man's arrogance brought about the greatest threat our world has ever known. There it is. The Dragonfire Brazier. Manimarco. 
I'm certain this will work. It will work, my liege. The Amulet of Kings will rekindle the dragon fires and ensure your rightful place as Emperor. You have my word. It better work, Money Marco, or you'll find your neck at the business end of my axe. My lord, I wonder if you'd muzzle your half-giant pet. She really is annoying. Enough, both of you. We are here to ensure my lord's rightful claim to the ruby throne. Abner, begin the ritual. I have a destiny to fulfill. Ah! By the lighting of the dragon fires, I claim my rightful lineage. By the fires of creation, let me be reborn. By the will of Akatosh, I proclaim myself Dragonborn! Baron Aquilarius, you are no heir to Alessia. You will pay for your sacrilege. The veil between Tamriel and Oblivion tears and splits asunder. What's happening? The sky is opening up. This is bad. This is very bad. Ritual tore the veil between Nairn and Oblivion, allowing Manamarco to begin stealing the souls his master needed to power the Dark Anchors and initiate the Plane Mill. Akatosh gave Alessia the Amulet of Kings as a symbol of his covenant with Nairn. So long as the amulet remained in the care of Alessia's heirs and the dragon fires remained lit, Tamriel would be protected from the Daedra. Manamarco tricked Varen into breaking the Covenant, and the veil between Oblivion and Nern was torn. The Elder Scrolls named this event the Soul Burst. It gave Molog Baal the opportunity to disconnect the souls of Nern from their hosts. Varen was lost. In the chaos of the moment, Sai Sahan took the Amulet of Kings and fled. Leris was captured by Manamarco and delivered to Cold Harbor, the realm of Molag Baal. Tharn remains Chancellor of the Elder Council, and his daughter Tribio rules as Empress Regent, but the true power remains in the hands of Manimarco and his worm cult. When I discovered the truth about the five companions, I made subtle inquiries, but apparently not subtle enough. Manimarco got word of my interests and abducted me. He took me to Cold Harbor, where I remained a prisoner until you freed me. The truth is always a threat to evil men. Manamarco feared I would reveal his treachery, and if knowledge of Nan's vulnerability were to become known, it could threaten his master's schemes. Molog Baal does not favor loose ends. Walk with me. Long ago it was written, so long as the amulet of kings was borne by Alessia's heirs, Tamriel would be protected from the forces of oblivion, but the soul burst tore the veil between worlds and gave Molog Baal the opportunity he desired. Molog Baal's dark anchors pierced the torn veil and seemed to draw near into the depths of Kalkha. These terrible engines of destruction were appearing all throughout Tamriel. survive the ordeal, and those that do will be enslaved for all eternity. And so it falls to us, Vistage. We must stop Molog Baal and his dark anchors, or our world is doomed. 
And now history seems to have caught up with us. Shall we return to the harborage? As you say. And so it begins. The remainder of the story has yet to be written. It is your story now. And there is so much to do. But know this, you will not walk this path alone. We must grow in strength and in numbers. You will need more than the company of an old blind man to alter the course of history. We must assemble our own group of companions. The first you have already met. Lyris sacrificed her own freedom to allow us to escape. She remains a prisoner in Cold Harbor. I must determine her precise location if we are to mount a rescue. That will take time. Minamako's agents leave a web of lies and deceit. They pit the races of Tamriel against one another and divert their attention from the real threat. Seek out these agents, wherever they can be found, and expose their lies. Forgive me. Bringing you to my mind seems to have taken quite a toll on me. I must rest. Greetings, child. We have been waiting for someone to summon us. Hangoff the Gravesinger has imprisoned us, and we are cut off from the weird. You must set the Guardians free. Have mortals so soon forgotten the old ways? Surely the Weirises remember the Standing Stones. First, the stones must be cleansed of Angoff's dark influence. Protect the weird while they destroy the corruption binding the stones. No, but cleansing the stones should loosen Angoff's grip. Tell Weary Selina about the corruption. She will know what must be done. They are a pestilence. They serve the corruption that binds us. The one called Angoff the Grave Singer. The cult spreads his decay, planting his blighted seeds to pollute the natural world. They prepare a path for Angoff's true master, Mola. destroyed one of my slaves, but I have so many more. 